My name is Brent Laycock. I have been painting in watercolor and acrylic for quite a number of years, and I've discovered that uh, acrylic is a very versatile medium that I really love and enjoy working with. For this demonstration today, I thought what I would do is first of all explain a little bit about the technical aspects of acrylic paint. And I'm going to do uh, about three small demonstrations to show those technical capabilities capabilities of the paint, and then uh, I'm going to do a longer demonstration of a, uh, a larger painting that will incorporate all of those things. First of all, I have two things here. I have um, a tray where I squeeze out the fresh paint, and then I have a mixing tray where I mix the colors, and, and you'll see later on how that operates. This tray here is a plastic tray that has a, a tight-fitting lid that goes on top of it. The purpose of the lid is to keep the air from going into that palette because the air is what will dry up and harden those paints. Usually if, if the lid is on, the paints will stay good for you know a number of days. Um, I don't bother trying to mist water or add any more water to this because one of the problems that you get in acrylic and that we'll find out is adding too much water creates some other problems. So if they dry up, you just uh, squeeze out more paint. I'm going to introduce to you the colors that I have in my palette. I use quite a number of, of colors, probably more than I need to, but every artist likes to choose the colors they like to have. And uh, I like to experiment with some of the ones and uh, I found some of these to be enjoyable to you. I'm gonna start with a little demonstration about using acrylic as watercolor. Now, what I'm painting with here is I've got a, a sheet of watercolor paper and it's, it's quite smooth paper. Uh, acrylic, uh, one of the good things about this medium is that you can paint on just about anything. You can paint on paper, on wood, on gessoed canvas, raw canvas, uh, plastic, anything that does not have an oily surface. If it has a, a bit of an oily texture to it, you know the paint won't stick properly because it does have water in it. Now this painting will probably not be a very great fabulous painting, but I just want to show you quickly how this can work. And I'm using the full body paint here, and it, so I have to make sure I've, I've got it, I'm just mixing it with water. Those of you who are watercolor painters will understand uh, this process quite easily. Now I like to just d paint directly, and what I'm hoping that you'll see here is, is how the, the, the water, you know, will kind of drip and run a little bit and the paint moves around. Um, Hoping you see that the, the paint moves a little bit with that wet and wet in there. I'm using a fairly big brush. It's not a watercolor brush, it's an acrylic brush, but I'm just getting this yellow with a little bit of burnt umber in it. I'm using tiny amounts of paint with quite a bit of water here. And I'm stirring it up well. It, it, it's not like watercolor so much in the sense that uh, it, does, it doesn't dissolve quite as fast as, as watercolor does. Now this, is, I'm gonna Start adding a little bit of green to this mixture I've got here. I like to paint fairly loosely, um, almost to the point of abstraction. Let the paint, especially in this watercolor technique, to kind of let the paint move around and see what it'll do. See, it kind of I got a little bit too much water there. Now my camera is not going to like this, but I'm going to move this around. Let it. Because, because what watercolor does is it moves, I want to let those drips kind of travel a bit and see what the color will do on its own. Now this stuff, uh, this mixture of the paint and the gloss medium dries very, very quickly. It dries faster than water does. Now here's an important thing. As I'm cleaning this brush, always remember my goal here is to have very little or the least amount of water possible in the brush. So now I'm gonna change my colors. Uh, I think I'll get into some of the blues.
so we can start to see where these mountains are. It's just like watercolor painting except using this medium instead of the water. If I want it a little bit lighter, I've added a little bit more medium to it. I want the paint to be really thick, like lots of paint in here. Sometimes uh, if you get into trouble and it's hard to, to make it opaque enough, it, it might have to do with the volume of paint. You have to have enough paint on there that it's a physically thick enough layer to cover up what's underneath. Since I've got this blue and the, these oranges together, I'm going to combine them to make a, a bit of a green, dull green here that I can use. Kind of building these mountains in a different way than, than the last ones. I can scratch around in some of this and while it's wet, you know, make a bit of texture. I'm going to move to just a slightly smaller brush now. Back into some of the, the colors I want for the mountains. If you, if, if you want a darker color, the, the proportion of color to white has to be a little bit more in favor of the color. I'm looking for an area where I can add some really dark, dark, maybe right in the base of, of this bush. Now earlier I think I was worried about that little area there and I think what I need to do is just bring it into kind of a logical shape. I don't know. That really is a logical shape, but my idea is that there's a, some trees kind of standing up higher there. Yeah, now up in, against this mountain, that edge there, there's some variations of some subtle greens in the back there I can use. They're fairly cool ones. I can make the slope along here, kind of emphasize that a little bit, draw it a little more carefully. 